Welcome back to Sip the Tattle Fans. I'm your host, Coach Evans. And today we're going to talk about our Cleveland Browns and our Baltimore Ravens preview. So no location today, not outside. I got a site in mind for next week's video, but today we're just in in the lab. We're going to kind of, kind of do it. It's, it's kind of quick because it's really, to me, it's not a lot of um, stuff to go through. Um, but let's kind of dive right on into it. And I appreciate you guys for coming back. And um, let's fire it up. Run that intro. All right, the Cleveland Browns are the 32nd ranked offense in the NFL. Like last, the dead last, 32 out of 32. Uh, they average 253.9 yards per game. Uh, passing yards, they're 30th with 159.6. Rushing their 29th with 94.3, even though they just got Nick Chubb back. I think he only had 22 yards last week. But um, we know that, you know, if Nick's healthy, they're going to ramp him up week by week by week. Uh, I don't think there's going to be much difference in Nick Chubb from last week to this week. But we know eventually down the line, maybe the second time we play the Browns, we'll probably get a healthier dose of the old Nick Chubb. But uh, as of right now, they're the worst offense in the NFL. They just lost Deshaun. Uh, Nick's just coming back. They traded Amari Cooper. A uh, bunch of things are not in their favor, which is what scares me about this team. A bunch of things are going so bad for them that it scares me. It really does. And I know it's a division game. And everybody should be, and I'm sure they still are locked in, but they just got so much stuff going wrong for them that it would be easy to have a mental letdown. I will say their offensive line have given them an ample amount of time to throw at 2.877 at 2.87 seconds, whether it's been uh, Deshaun, DTR for a brief period of time, or Jameis for a brief period of time. We know DTR came in when Deshaun went out, but he got hurt, and then they came in with Jameis, and Jameis is the starter for Sunday with DTR being his backup. Now, on the other side of that offensive line, Corn, they've also been sacked the most. The Browns QBs have been sacked 35 times this year. They lead the league in that category. Um, I know starting off the year with the Cowboys, Micah and, and D-Law got out them pretty good, and they just started the trend with, with them getting sacked a bunch, <laughs> a bunch. So they lead the league, where well, their quarterbacks lead the league in being sacked. And they only have 17 rushes of 10 yards or more. And when you look at that in context, the Baltimore Ravens, have 40. We have 40 yards of 10, 40 rushes of 10 yards or more. They only have 17. Again, but they just got Chubb back. Just got Chubb back. And he's not the Nick Chubb of old yet, but they just got Chubb back. Flip over to the defensive side. Uh, the Browns are ranked 13 total defense, giving up 317.9 yards per game. They're 11th versus the pass with 197.1 and 18th versus the run with 126.1. Let's talk about some stats for them individually. Uh, start with their quarterback room. Uh, Deshaun's done for the year. Uh, they brought DTR in after Deshaun got hurt. Uh, he played for a little while. He got hurt. They finished the game with Jameis. Uh, and Jameis actually had a little success. So um, that's the guy they're going with. Sunday with DTR as the backup. And with Jameis, you just don't know what you're going to get. Uh, I remember the, the year he had Tampa. <clears throat> 40 touchdown. 40, no, not 40. Did he have 40? 40? <laughs> Let me look. Let me check. I can't remember. Was it 40? 40? Let me look right quick. I know it was in Tampa. Oh, it was 30-30. 30, 30, 30 touchdowns, 30 interceptions. 
But I'm saying you never know what you're going to get with James. You don't know if you're going to get touchdowns or interceptions with him. So it's, it's, he's a wild card, and he don't have enough tape to to formulate a, a huge game plan. So you got to adapt to what they're doing quickly and what what he's trying to do real quick. As far as running the ball, Jerome Ford is their leading rusher at 264 yards. Uh, actually, Deshaun is their second leading rusher with 148, but we know he's done. Uh, Deontay Foreman is the third leading rusher at 129, but Chubb is back. So Chubb will start to eat away at some of those carries for both of those guys. The better, the more healthier he is, the more carries he'll start to get. And so those guys are kind of fall back into the fold, and Chubb will eventually be the lead dog in this running back room. But right now, Jerome Ford is their lead rusher and will probably be their number one rusher Sunday. But um, Chubb's going to have a significant role, if not Sunday, on down the line. But I expect him to have more of a more than 11 carries um, this week because he had 11 last week. To their receiving room, they traded away Mark Cooper. Um, their best receiving threat to me is David Njoku, who's a tight end. Um... They also have Jerry Judy, they got from Denver, uh, Jordan Atkins, Elijah Moore, a few other guys in there. Um, the rookie from Tennessee. What's the rookie? I don't know if he's a rookie, but he's from Tennessee, I think. Uh, Cedric Tillman. They got Cedric Tillman as well. And um, one of my favorite guys, Proche, but he's not going to be a factor other than catching punts, spare catching punts. punts. But um, it's not an impressive receiver room. But Jerry Judy can – can pop out and have a, a big game because he has the tools. He just hadn't put it all together. Elijah Moore was trending up when he was a Jet, but went to Cleveland and hasn't done pretty much anything. Uh, but Njoku is a problem. <laughs> David Njoku is a problem. And if Jameis can find a way to get him actively involved in the game plan early too, he, he, he's a problem. <laughs> so <laughs> that's the guy we got to watch out receiving the ball for them. And then, you know, if they sprinkle in some, some Jerry Judy here, there, and everywhere, it could be an issue, but I don't see it should be an issue, but it could be. Potential issues. Miles Garrett. Miles Garrett is everything that you'd want in a defensive end slash defensive lineman, but he can't do it by himself. Can't do it by himself. If you can block him and keep him from disrupting your entire game plan, you know, you really, really have a great chance of, of beating this team. Um, what I will say is they've given up the most. I don't say the most. They've given up 29 runs of 10-plus yards or more. So I, I took a look at all of those runs to kind of see what the what was, what was the common theme with those runs. And what I did see is they gave up a lot of jet sweeps. And then what teams would do was they fake the jet sweep and run like some kind of inside run or off tackle run off the jet sweep, and they gave up a lot of 10 yard runs off that. So, with every game that I saw, there was a jet sweep that was successful. And y'all know we run jet sweep with Zay, so that definitely needs to be in there. And then it also needs to be some kind of inside zone or outside zone off of the jet sweep. So, the stuff that I've seen people be, be successful against them, we already have in our offense, so I expect to see that. Um, I don't expect them <clears throat> to stop us. I think we have – our receivers have confidence to beat one-on-one, -on -one, which the Browns play a boatload of cover one. They're going to put guys in the box to stop the run and play us one-on-one -on, -one on the edges, and they have some good corners. Not not taking nothing away from their corners. They got a, three pretty good guys back there. Uh, I like JOK as a linebacker. But if we do what we're supposed to do on our end, block it up, catch the ball, um, run it, use play action, uh, receivers win their 1v1s, we should be good versus them. I don't see them stopping us if we do what we're supposed to do. If we do some uncharacteristic stuff, we could be in for a dogfight. Because, again, like I said at the beginning, they got so much stuff going wrong right now, it's almost like they're due for some good news over there. And I don't want that good news to be versus us. Let them get their good news next week versus whoever they play next week. We just need to come in and and, and Deion said something that um Deion Sanders said something I think last week in his halftime speech. 
that we used to always say back home in, in Natchez. Let's try to kill a gnat with a sledgehammer. So they're struggling. They, they're going through a lot. Uh, it seems that the, the team and the fans are at odds. Let's go in there and, and pulverize them. Take, take their win early. Um, punish them early. Let, let them be like, okay, forget this. Let's, let's go on the next week. And just keep fighting. And don't be let up at the end like we did at the end of the Tampa game. Yeah. So that's, that's really quick, short, simple game plan for the Browns. Um, I don't see them hanging with us um, score-wise. I'm going to go 31-14, and we just keep rolling. We keep rolling. King Henry keeps rolling. The receivers keep rolling. I see a big day for the tight ends because I think they are going to prioritize uh, guarding Zay and Bateman. So I see one of the tight ends having a big day on top of Lamar and and, and uh, Derrick Henry doing their usual thing. Um but that's what I got for y'all, man. That is the preview for the Browns. I'll see you guys tomorrow with the watch party. I'm back with the watch party after a two-week absence. And we'll have the call-in show after the game tomorrow as well, man. I appreciate all you guys for, for tuning in yesterday for the weekend review, uh, for watching this today. Tap that like button. If you're new here, hit that subscribe button and hit the bell so you'll be notified when the rest of this content drops. And share it. Share it on your socials, share it on Reddit, share it in your Discord. I appreciate y'all, man. Enjoy the rest of y'all Saturday. Peace.